In this video, we'll explore what tiredness really is. We'll talk about the mechanism of homeostatic pressure, which essentially quantifies tiredness. We'll also talk about hormones that are responsible for tiredness, whether slow wave sleep and REM sleep produce different feelings of tiredness when they are missed and more. Stay tuned! <coughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Crimson Flower and I'm a main author of Polyphasic.net, the recommended resource for polyphasic sleepers. So let's go back to the concept of homeostatic pressure and the circadian rhythm, okay? So let's go back a bit to the concept of homeostatic pressure. The circadian rhythm and sleep-wake homeostatic processes together are two major processes that regulate sleep and alertness. Whereas the circadian is set to a general daily cycle, the homeostatic pressure refers to the sleep pressure that builds up over time until it is reduced by sleep. What's cool is that the community has found that REM sleep and non-REM sleep have separate homeostatic pressures. So if you manage to get all needed slow wave sleep, for example, your REM sleep will keep building up and so on until it's reduced by you receiving REM sleep in a sleep block. The higher the homeostatic pressure, or in other words, the more uh, sleep deprivation you have, uh, the more it will override the circadian your circadian pressure at that time. Further, the more sleep deprived you are, the more resistant your brain will be to changing your circadian rhythm. This is important while attempting a standard schedule, shifted later, for the SWS peak. Um, you still want to set your new circadian rhythm like preferably first using light and other cues which can take from one to two weeks before your homeostatic sleep depth gets too high. So even other words what I'm saying is that you should preferably set your circadian rhythm first, be first before you start a polyphasic sleep schedule if it's possible, okay? In a healthy adapted brain, your, the homeostatic pressure builds up over the course of a day before being reset, or just over a few hours in advanced polyphasic sleep schedules. Polyphasic schedules with naps are designed to relieve homeostatic pressure more frequently than, than once a day. Um, Specifically, naps can alleviate or relieve REM pressure by containing 10 to 15 minutes of REM sleep, as well as reducing overall sleep pressure that can be relieved with light sleep. On extreme schedules like Uberman, uh, naps are supposed to contain slow wave sleep to frequently reduce the slow wave sleep homeostatic pressure as well. Okay, uh, let me give you a picture of the different natures of the circadian rhythm and homeostatic processes. The circadian rhythm is a natural uh, internal process that regulates the sleep-wake cycle and repeats itself after roughly 24 hours. Think of it as a sinus curve or as a loop. It's self-sustained but adjusts itself and is influenced by various so-called sight gabbers such as light, temperature or food intake. They establish uh, the rhythm, the established rhythm will affect uh, alertness levels during the day, melatonin secretions and the times when the body is in rest mode or when slow wave sleep and REM sleep peaks are and therefore when it's best to sleep. Compared to the circular circadian rhythm, the homeostatic pressure is more like a curve that's first upwards regulated and then plateaus as the time progresses. Uh, different to the circadian pressure will diminish, will vanish at some point in the morning after uh, a night without sleep. The only way to reduce the homeostatic pressure is by sleeping, after which it starts to increase again. During the day your circadian sinus curve will be at the highest point and as evening approaches it will start to return down to uh, until it's finally as low as possible in the night. Okay, great. But why am I talking about curves and circles here? Well, the difference between your homeostatic pressure and your circadian rhythm is essentially your tiredness. When the difference is large, you are more tired, and when it's small, you are more alert. That's why you feel more alert during the day than during the night. The difference is automatically smaller. 
And I mentioned that sleeping reduces your homeostatic pressure. Well, naps do that too, and it's very apparent. Now, of course, naps will not decrease your homeostatic pressure as much as a core sleep does. But especially older people will definitely notice if they nap late in the day, their tiredness will simply not be large enough to be able to fall asleep during the night, which is not a good situation to be in. Okay. During polyphasic adaptations, your homeostatic pressure can vary rapidly because the brain has not yet adapted to the new sleeping pattern. Instead of returning to equilibrium every day, the homeostatic pressure can build up over the course of several weeks. This is why people, uh, this way adaptations to the last, to the vast majority of people uh, or schedules is mostly like apparent during week three. People entering. Uh, a uh, polyphasic schedule with pre-existing sleep that will experience intense homeostatic sleep pressure sooner. This is why polyphasic adaptations are challenging, especially when starting already sleep deprived. And the difficulty is proportional to the number of daily sleep hours reduced. Great, so now you, now you know what homeostatic pressure is, but what is actually causing it? Well, the biological name for home hormones that dictate your tiredness is endogenous somnogens, and the main one is adenosine. You may recall us talking about how ca coffee inhibits your adenosine receptors in an earlier video, uh, which you can find linked in the description. Uh, there are also other somnogens like uh, prostaglad prostaglandin, um, but as I said, adenosine is the main one. At this point in time, it's unknown whether uh, the different sleep pressures that arise from different endogenous somnogens, or whether they are some like distinguished in some other ways. Um, so unfortunately, I can't explain to you which somnogen builds up to represent REM sleep pressure and which one builds up to represent slow wave sleep pressure and so on when you're deprived of the specific sleep stage. Regardless, let's talk about the function of naps a bit more here. And let's go even further back and be more thorough with the subject. Many different polyphasic sleep schedules have short 20 minute naps, which serve two main purposes. The first is to ensure that you get enough vital sleep, which is mostly prevalent for the earlier naps. And the second is to assure that your homeostatic pressure is decreased enough to carry you to the next sleep block. This can be observed on a polyphasic sleep schedule with, schedules with a higher total sleep time, since you can schedule your naps further apart on those than on schedules with a lower total sleep amount of time, or lower amount of total sleep time. This is because the schedule has a lower percentage of light sleep uh, when the total sleep time is lower, th thanks to the process of repartitioning. And so this is actually one of the main functions of light sleep, and it, and I believe that uh, it's partially the reason why you're able, why you are able to automatically shorten your total sleep time just by adding a nap in the middle of the day or by segmenting your core sleep. You simply don't need to stay awake as long and your body can chuck away some of the light sleep. If you are interested in learning more about this and whether reducing light sleep is dangerous, we've released a video uh, in our series on whether polyphasic sleeping is dangerous, where we tackle this issue. Uh, you can check it out from the description. The link to it will be there. But um, can people actually tell the difference between slow wave sleep and REM sleep pressure? Well, it seems like some people feel like they're able to do it, but it's not something that's easy at all and you may need to be very experienced to be able to differentiate between them. That said, many of the polyphasic sleep schedules we recommend won't realistically allow you to even notice your slow wave sleep pressure, since if you have at least three cycles of slow wave sleep pressure, uh, you will be taken care yeah, if you have three cycles of during your core, all your slow wave sleep need will be taken care of it during that core most likely. So you're not going to have a deficit of it at all and it will just be allowed to be as high as it needs to and you won't actually feel any slow wave sleep deprivation. Okay. 
Slow wave sleep pressure really starts to be noticeable on schedules like E3, dual core 3 and even triphasic. But it will be extremely apparent on nap only schedules like Uberman, Dimaction and so on. Speaking of nap only schedules, they are very re difficult partially for this reason. Uh, if you would like to have your dreams crushed by a previous video where I explain why you shouldn't attempt nap only schedules, you can check it out in the link in the description. Alright, I hope you learned more about what homeostatic pressure is and uh, why there are some limits on polyphasic sleep schedules. If you have any questions on the topic, feel free to pop them in the comment section below. Also remember to subscribe if you haven't, because why not? <laughs> Great, I'll see you in the next video. Remember to nap well people!